Capitol Hill stepped up their opposition to federal funding for the organization after an edited video was released purportedly showing Planned Parenthood officials discussing the sale of fetal tissue, an attempt to, the, uh, to tie Planned Parenthood funding to a measure to avoid a federal government shutdown failed in the Senate yesterday. Here's Senator Rand Paul on the floor of the Senate voicing his opposition to that so-called continuing resolution that would allow the government to remain funded. We were told that when we took over Congress, when Republicans were elected to Congress, that things would be different. That if voters put us in charge, we would right the ship. We would stop the deficits. And here we are with another continuing resolution. What is a continuing resolution? It is a steaming pile of the same old, same old. Let me be clear. A continuing resolution is not a good thing. It is more of the status quo. Senator Rand Paul, uh, the Republican from Kentucky, a Republican presidential candidate, is joining us now live from Capitol Hill. Senator, thanks very much for coming in. Thank you. But you agree, uh, everyone agrees the continuing resolution is not the best way to fund the government, but at <laughs> least it allows the government to remain operational and those vital services to the American people can continue. Isn't that better than shutting down the government? Well, I think, I think it's not an either-or situation. I think that we should no longer continue to spend money at the same rate we are spending money. So, yes, we should let all spending expire, and then we should renew those programs that are working. And then it should require a supermajority to get the new program started. I went through a list of about 10 different programs, including one program where we're studying Japanese quail to see whether they're more sexually promiscuous when they're on cocaine. The only way to stop those programs is to let them expire and then say, you know what, it's going to take 60 votes to restart the programs. I'm not advocating a shutdown, but I am advocating that all the spending expire and that we have a serious discussion of every program to see what's working, what isn't working, what is wasteful, and what is duplicative. You want the House of Representatives to pass this so-called continuing resolution so that the government can operate starting October 1st. If they don't pass it, as you know, the government's going to run out of money and all these government agencies are going to be shut down. The continuing resolution is a collection of all of the spending bills lumped together and there's no reform. So we borrowed a million dollars a minute. I think it makes no sense to continuing spending money at this rate. So I would stop all of the spending, let it expire. And then the interesting thing is the rules of the Senate are it takes 60 votes to affirmatively pass anything. That hurdle of 60 votes should be used not to stop spending, but actually to get it started. So things like Planned Parenthood, which are very, very controversial, and the procedure of turning the baby around to get to its organs in order to sell the organs is very controversial. I think it should require 60 votes to affirmatively begin spending money on Planned Parenthood. And this could all happen if we simply let it expire and then try to restart those parts of government that are working and that we want to continue. Well, it looks like the House probably will pass this temporary measure. The government will stay open at least for three months. And then this bigger battle that you want to undertake, uh, you'll be able to, to continue that fight. Let's talk about the race for the White House for a few moments while I, I have you. In the last uh, polls, uh, right now, you were at 3%. Uh, before that, you were at 11%. Uh, Donald Trump, he's really going after you. You're going after him. He tweeted this. He says, my prediction, Rand Paul has been driven out of the race by my <laughs> statements about him. He will announce soon 1%. Uh, so what's your reaction when you see him predict you're about to drop out of this race? You know, it's sort of silly season anytime Donald Trump opens his mouth. But I would say that something that's very important for Republicans is that he's not a real conservative. No real conservative would have supported a single-payer system, single-payer system for uh, medical or health care. No real conservative would support raising taxes. And no real conservative would have supported President Obama's government stimulus plan. And I think really probably the most offensive thing that he is for is actually for taking private property through eminent domain from small property owners and giving it to big corporations like his. I think really most of the people in the Tea Party, like myself, we were upset about people manipulating government for their own personal benefit. And I think that's the essence of who Donald Trump is. So I think once the Tea Party and conservatives wake up and say, you know what, this guy really is a manipulator and the consummate insider who uses government for his own personal benefit, 
I think when people realize that, you're going to see a great shift away from him. In these national polls, though, he's at, what, 20 or maybe 25 percent in some of these polls. You're at 2 percent, maybe 3 <laughs> percent. Why is he doing so well and you're not? There is a certain celebrity phenomenon going on that's skewing the polls, but I think we've started to see a shift. He's down about 10 points, and I think there's going to be a time when he will be marginalized and seen somewhat for the comedic individual that he is, but not really as a serious contender. And I think that's where he'll wind up. Uh, we just need to move along and get closer to that point when uh, all Americans will see that he's not a serious contender. He issued a pretty detailed tax plan yesterday, as you know, lowering the top rate from about 39 percent to 25 percent, eliminating taxes for all sorts of individuals who make under $25,000 a year, couples who make under $50,000 a year. I assume you like those reductions in the tax rate that he proposed. You know, I think my tax plan is better. I get rid of all 70,000 pages of the tax code. I have one single rate, 14.5 percent for individuals and 14.5 percent for corporations. I also do something that no other tax plan does, and I get rid of the payroll tax. So every working class American will have a couple thousand dollars left in their paycheck. So I like our plan better. It's simpler. His plan will continue a lot of the cronyism and a lot of the special interest politics that go into the tax code. Ours would eliminate all of that. You could file your tax return on one single postcard. What about his proposal to raise taxes for the what he calls the hedge fund guys? I would do the opposite. Instead of raising their taxes, I would lower everyone else's taxes to that level. So uh, hedge fund guys, people who make capital gains taxes, they pay about 20, 23 percent right now. What I'd like to do is lower everybody to 14 and a half. So individuals now are paying above 40. I'd bring them down to 14 and a half. I would have one of the drama most dramatic tax cuts in our history. But what it would do is it would leave all of that money in the private economy. And that's where jobs are created. I think my plan would create millions of jobs. And I think it uh, really stacks up well against any of the other proposals. One final question unrelated to the taxes. But this report that came out by the House Homeland Security Committee, final report of the task force on combating terrorists and foreign fighter travel. It's a damning indictment saying basically there's been no counterterrorism plan on the uh, on the table for a decade right now in fighting terrorists and foreign fighter travel. It's pretty shocking when you go through it. I know you haven't gone through the entire report, but what's your immediate reaction when you hear these kinds of reports issued by this Homeland Security Committee in the House, bipartisan members, not just Republicans, but Democrats as well? Well, we did have one program under President Bush that I agreed with that President Obama got rid of, and it went to this point. It had special scrutiny for entry and exit of people coming from about 25 countries that have significant jihadist movements intent on attacking America. So I think we should have special scrutiny on those visiting as students, those wanting to get green cards, and those wanting to come on travel visas, because frankly, that's where the hijackers came from. And so I think we should be more careful. And I think we have to have more scrutiny on those who want to visit America. Senator Paul, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you.